Hi, flute players. It's Mr. Y, obviously. Uh, I'm going to do a little tutorial here on the Stars and Stripes Forever flute solo. That's the part that starts at measure 53 in the Stars and Stripes Forever arrangement that we're doing. Uh, John Philip Sousa, arranged by Andrew Ballant, of course. This is the one we do at Band Bonanza every year, uh, so it's a good idea to know this solo. Mostly we do it in 7th grade, although there are usually a few 8th graders that are catching up and some 6th graders are advanced and, and get on to it in 6th grade. Okay, so a couple things you need to know before we start the whole thing. First of all, make sure you have all your measures numbered here, because I'm going to be referring to the measure numbers, and I'll do it kind of quickly, so you're going to want to find the measure number pretty quickly. If you did it right, the second ending at the end of the song, right before the optional ending that we don't do, is measure 85. So there should be 85 measures altogether in this. Okay, the flute solo itself starts at measure 53, or letter G in the... Uh, rehearsal letters that they already had pre-printed on there. I'm going to not talk about the letters, though. I'm going to talk about the numbers. So 53 is where the flute solo starts. A um, couple of keys you need to know here, a couple of notes that you need to know before we do this solo. Um, first of all, you need to be really familiar with the B-flat key. Remember, the B-flat key on the back is what I sometimes call the golf club key. It looks like this. It's this guy right here. It looks a little bit like a golf club when you look just by itself, okay? Um, it's really called the B-flat key because when you do that key on the back instead of the big key on the back, you get the B flat with just your first finger out here and not using this finger right here, which comes in really, really handy at some points, um, especially today when we're going to get into that trill in just a minute. The trill is just about impossible if you're not using the B flat key. So you are going to use the B flat key for most of this solo here. Really, the B flat key uh, goes up until measure 73. When you get to 73, I'm going to have you shift your finger over just a little bit to get to the B natural because there are some B naturals from 73 to the end of the solo. But other than that, it's going to be all B-flat key the whole time. So you're going to want to keep your thumb here. Like I said, B-flat, you don't have to have this finger down. You get the B-flat all by itself without this. Remember, if you normally have this finger up and you have your thumb key down in the regular place, on the regular key back there, you get a B-natural. Then you have to add this finger to get the B-flat. But with the B-flat key, you don't have to do that. That's the really nice thing. Now, when you do the trill on the B-flat key, all you're going to do is trill with your thumb right here. You're going to move your thumb up and down because that gives you a B flat up to a C, which is the trill. You can see I'm not moving this hand at all. I'm just moving my thumb key here for that trill. That's all it is. Okay. We're going to talk about trills more in a minute. Uh, second note you need to know is there are a bunch of high E flats here. In fact, you'll see there's one right here that I've highlighted. That's what the high E flat looks like. Okay, it's on the third line up above the staff. There's quite a few of them in this song. Um, the E flat is kind of an easy note on the flute because it's every single finger on your flute, including both your pinkies. So you've got your A flat key here, plus your other pinky on this side. You have to blow it pretty fast too, of course. But it is a fairly easy note to get just because you've got all your fingers down. It's kind of a default. You, know, you don't have to worry about which fingers to hold up. You just push them all down. Kind of nice. Um, the other note that you need to know is the D, the high D, which is right below the high E flat. This is what that one looks like right there. You can see it's above two of the lines. It's perched on top of two of the lines above the staff. So it's just a little bit below the E flat. Um, the high D is just like a low D, except that you reverse this hand. So your pinky's down on your right hand. And on your left hand, your thumb is down on the regular key or the golf club key. It does not matter which one. In this case, we're going to have mostly the golf club key. And your second and third finger out here. Not your pointer finger, but your second and third finger. That's the high D. You can hear it's almost as high as the high E flat. You still have to blow just as uh, fast as that one, really. So you're going to want to get used to the D and the high E flat before you really attempt this solo too much at all. Okay? Um, next thing. There are a number of trills in this song. A trill, of course, is where you go rapidly back and forth between one note and another note. The general rule of thumb is that when you see a trill, when you see that little TR squiggly sign, like, for instance, that right there, okay, you're going to trill from the note that's there until uh, up, to, up to the next note in the key signature. So, for instance, in this one at measure 56, we have a high B flat trill. That would mean you go from the B flat up to the next note up in the key signature, which is a C. You wouldn't go to a B natural. There's a B flat in the key signature. You would go all the way up to the C, which is why, by the way, we do the trill this way with the thumb. Okay. You're just going back and forth there a little bit on that. Um, and the way I like to think about trills, at least in this particular song, is I like to think of them as 16th notes landing on the fourth beat of the measure. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four, da 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 kind of. You 
can do them nice and regular like that, at least at first until you get going. When you get better at it, you might want to make them faster and just make sure you land on the last beat okay. You, you do have to land on the next note okay. You know, you could do it that way kind of thing. Um, but at first, if you want to, you can just do it in a regular rhythm. One E and a two E and a three E and a four that would be a good way to go. Okay, so you've got some B flat trills here. There's three of those. There's uh, one in measure 56, one in measure 72, one in measure 80, and the one in measure 80 is a really long one. That goes to the end of the solo. I'll show you more about that in a minute. Um, and again, you're just doing the, the B flat key here with that one. Okay, the A flat trill happens twice. There's one in measure 60 and one in measure 64, you'll notice. It's the A flat, which is three fingers plus your pinky key, of course, your right hand pinky and your thumb in the back, either on the golf club key in this case, or the other one will fine too. Okay, and the way you trill on an A flat is you're going to leave your pinky down and you're going to leave your pointer finger down, but you're going to trill the other two fingers on your left hand. Um, you can get away with it trilling just the one finger, the middle finger, if you need to. You cannot get away with it just trilling the ring finger. Um, you can hear that's the, what it really should sound like, the A flat. If you do the middle finger, it's almost in tune. Just a little bit flat. If you do the ring finger, that's not right at all, so you can't get away with that. You might be able to get away with just the middle finger, though, if you wanted to do that. But once you get really the middle finger down, it's really pretty easy to do both those fingers at once. They work together pretty well. And again, one E and a two E and a three E and a four, I think is the way you want to go on that. Um, so there's two of those A flat trills, measure 60 and measure 64. And there's only one little G trill. That's in measure number 76, is that right? Yeah, 76. Okay, the G trill is easy because you just play the G, three fingers, and then you trill up to the A with your ring finger. So, you might want to practice all three of those trills just by themselves until you get them really down. And again, like I said, practice the high D, practice the high E flat. Then, once you get all those things down, you're going to try to tackle the solo. Now, what I would do definitely on the solo first is go nice and slow. You want to go really slow at first. Slow and good is better than fast and bad. If you can play it slow, perfectly, then you can always get it better. Uh, you can always get it faster by just playing it over and over and over again. Your fingers are naturally going to get better at it. If you fluff through parts of it um, when you're going slow, you're never going to get it really good. So make sure you take it really, really slow and get it really, really perfect. That's the idea. Um, I like to call it super slow motion. So I'm going to do that right now, starting at letter G or 53. Okay. Um, you're going to be able to hear me, I'm sure, make a few mistakes, and I'll stop again and start again and that kind of thing. This is, you know, not a solo that you get overnight. This is something you're going to have to work on progressively over a number of weeks or months or maybe years, you know, depending on how long it takes you to do this. Um, remember, small chunks of practice time are a lot better than, you know, large ones. So if you do five minutes a day, every single day, you'd have a lot of this down and you really focus your energy on this part. I think you'd really uh, have a lot of this down within, you know, a couple of weeks probably. Okay. So again, 53. I'm going to go really slow. Nope. So let's see. Oh, that to go from the high D to the low D is a little tricky because you got this and then you go to the, the, D, the low D there and then back to the high D. So you may want to practice that just a little bit. I'm going to start at letter H or 61. That's not a E flat, that's a D, sorry. Uh, 67. Okay, I think 65 up to 68 is maybe the most challenging part of it. Um, it's not hard, but remember, you want to do little chunks of it at a time, so maybe just 65 by itself. No. You know, until you get it really good, then maybe 66 by itself. This is another spot where that B flat key comes in handy because you can do A flat to B flat and not A flat to B flat. Generally speaking, the fewer things you can move as you're going from one note to another, the easier it's going to be to put together, of course. Uh, 66, one more time. And 
and then 67. And I cheated and put 68 with it too, but you know what I mean. Um, you're going to want to break these up into little chunks. Then, when you've got them all individually, try to put them back together. So, 65. Nope. So, you see, I need to go back and do 65 a couple more times too, because I did mess it up that one time. But for now, I'm going to move on. Um, this is 69. That's not right. Now remember, this is where I'm going to move my B flat key onto the B natural. I'm going to go from the B flat golf club key to the B natural because from now on, 73 on, we're going to have B naturals. Okay. So when you go to 73, the B natural. <laughs> Man, that's a tough one. There's that G to A flat trill right there. Okay. And then J. Yeah, let's see. A flat, it's going to have the pinky, and then you add all your fingers for the E flat. So that's not actually all that bad. Remember, G flat is the same as F sharp, so your peace sign note. Okay, three fingers here, plus your ring finger and your pinky. Uh, so going back to J. So we've got the A flat up to E flat. Then we've got the G flat or F sharp up to E flat. And remember, it's G flat both times in 78. And then it's G natural both times in 79. So three fingers, no fingers over here for 79. Okay, now for the trill. What I would do on the trill is I would break it up into one measure trills until you get really good at it. Um, the first trill, uh, 80, measure 80 is all by itself anyway. So you're just going to do 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4. I'm counting in 4, by the way. I know it's in cut time, but just for the demonstration of the trill. I mean, I am counting in 4. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 is the way you're going to do the trill in 80. Uh, 80, 80, 80 0. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4. Okay. That kind of thing. Okay, now, for 81 up to 82 and 83, it's all one big long trill. But if you wanted to, you could break it up into measures, just like I just did. And just do three of those in a row. That gives you a chance to breathe in between. As a 6th grader or 7th grader, you're probably going to need that. I think by the time you get to 8th grade, you probably can do all that on one long breath. Or maybe take a staggered, breathe, uh, a staggered breath in there somewhere with your stand partner. So that you can make it sound like one long continuous trill without having to worry about it. Um, and then we do land on the E flat at the end, a high E flat again, every single finger on your flute, including both your pinkies. Uh, there's an optional low E flat for that one, but play the high one. You, you got the high one for all the other ones too. We might as well play it here. Okay, so 81. That kind of thing, okay, if you break it up into separate uh, measures. Um, Again, you're going to want to spend a lot of time on this, just doing little chunks of it at a time. That's the way to practice. That's the way to go. That's the way to go. Small little bits of practice uh, work a lot better than trying to do it all at once. Okay? Good luck with it. If you have any questions, see me in class, of course, or send me an email. I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks. Bye.